We should be going live here in a moment. Multiple screens. Yes. Ensemble. There we are. And we are live. Welcome, everybody. I have quite a few more people here than I'm admitting, so bear with me. Thank you for joining us on this Monday evening. Um, usually we start right at seven. There is a decent amount of people um, joining us. So bear with me while I get everybody here in the Zoom. Okay. Okay. 63 so far in our audience just on um, Zoom. Let's see here how many we have on Facebook Live. Only about six, but I think those people will catch up to us. Let me not echo myself because I have two things going on here. All righty. We are waiting on one connection. Welcome um, to everyone. Um, if this is your first time joining us for our Monday um, readings, okay. Taya. Welcome. I do see Taya. Um, Treva, I okay. do see Taya. Mom, just FYI. Mom, okay. You see where the thing is, where the mute thing is with the microphone far left? And I'm muting everybody just so you can all hear me talking. Um, I will, looks like I will be admitting people um, as our audience is continuing to grow. That's great. Um, my name is Celeste Cosentino and I'm the Executive Artistic Director of Ensemble Theater. Uh, this is the sixth of our series of reading. Um, 10 minute plays um, in this time of COVID um, where we are social distancing. We cannot meet in person in theaters right now. Um, so this was one of our creative ways of um, sharing with everybody uh, some local work. Oh, nice, Trevor. Um, sharing some local work um, of our local artists in terms of playwriting, some amazing local actors. Um, these last six performances, I mean, it's just been a wonderful experience for me myself, just watching them. Um, so I know you audience will definitely enjoy them because there is some really just rich talent here in Northeast Ohio writing wise, acting wise, and it's really um, wonderful to have this opportunity to um, create a platform for people to still do some kind of theater um, in this crazy um, COVID situation that we all find ourselves in. Um, I will uh, just to set out some quick ground rules for everybody and then we'll kind of get started. Um, I'm gonna share a link in the um, chat with everybody. This is just the page um, that allows you to look um, and see what 10 minute plays are coming up. So this is the page that's dedicated on our website um, to the 10 minute series that we'll be doing. Uh, we will be taking a break just FYI for the month of December so that everybody can take a rest, including myself. Um, and then we'll be back up and starting again in January. Um, and hopefully um, we will see you all as well. Um, there is no cost for admission, of course, for this program. Um, but of course, during this crazy time, I'm also putting a link, if you so choose and would love to make a donation to Ensemble Theater, that would be wonderful um, to kind of help us as well navigate um, these unprecedented challenges that I know all theater communities are facing um, in terms of revenues and fundraising and all that kind of stuff just coming to a really abrupt halt um, and having been in a holding pattern and still somewhat in a holding pattern for the last seven or so months. Um, so if you can, and only if you are able, uh, please too, if you would like to um, donate to the theater, we would be so appreciative of that support. Um, we have a good number of, I want to say about 20 people on 
Facebook Live, and then we have another 68 people, and the audience keeps growing here um, on Zoom. Uh, so good, about 80 people tonight. That's not bad for Zoom um, on a Monday night. It is a little snowy and a little rainy, so I'm hoping everybody's connection stays strong. Um, and so what I would say is if you are in our audience, if you could just use that chat function um, to share your feedback, your thoughts on a script, if you could ideally wait till that little break that we're gonna take between each uh, reading each 10 minute play, that would be wonderful. Um, but I can share that with everyone. I'll read them aloud just because of course we don't wanna have everybody talking at the same time. You can also, if you're watching us via Facebook Live, you can use those that comment thread as well. Um, and I will also share the links um, for the 10 minute plays and our donations in the links of the Facebook Live feed as well once we get the reading started. Um, just so I can make sure that we're all set. If you are um, an actor that is reading in any one of the three scripts tonight, if you could, while you're not reading, of course, keep your video and your um, audio muted. And then as we um, introduce each show, you are welcome to turn those back on. Um, and within your reading, of course, you guys have your, whether or not you're turning your videos on or off. So without further ado, I would love to introduce our first playwright, um, and she will give you a little bit of information on why she wrote the piece that she wrote, um, tell you who her wonderful cast is, um, and then we will commence um, with uh, the first reading. And um, yeah, if you're an audience member, if you could make sure it does help with the connection, if you turn both your video and your sound off, you will still be able to see and hear everything we're doing or the people who have their sound and video on, meaning the actors and the playwright. Um, but the more you keep your video off and the more you keep your audio off, the better the connection is for everybody. Um, I can mute everyone. I cannot turn everybody's video off, I don't believe. Although I could try, um, as you guys are reading, if I need to, I can do that. But it looks like everybody, pretty much everybody is doing that on their own. Um, I can go through and stop your video. So if you see me stopping your video, it's nothing personal. Again, if I mute you, it's totally nothing personal. Um, so without further ado, uh, let me introduce our first playwright, Jean Madison. Um, if, you're, if you and your cast want to, um, or those who need to want to turn on your video and your, um, your video and your audio, we can get started. What the, uh, actual thing that Zoom will do is focus on who's talking. So again, it also helps if you turn on your, um, if you turn off your video and your audio so it focuses on the playwrights and the actors who are speaking. So without further ado, I will turn the Zoom over for a second to the lovely Jean Madison. And let me find where you are. You have your video on, yay. If you wanna tell us a little bit, Jean, uh, why you wrote the script, a little bit about where it came from, and if you want to introduce your lovely cast, and then the show, the stage is yours. Thank you, Celeste. Um, and I'm really thrilled to have uh, my play Black Bougie as part of the Stage Right 10-Minute Play series, so thank you for that. Um, I wrote this play actually as a 10-minute play specifically for Zoom, and it came out of um, the events that we are seeing unfold before us on television with uh, the violence against Blacks by police. And I was specifically uh, moved by the case of a young man named Brandon McLeod, who you'll hear mentioned in this, which is a true story It occurred in Cleveland. And then also my own experiences and uh, focusing on a quest for security, quest to be able to protect one's children, and understanding that the Black community is not monolithic, but the one thing that unites us all is at any moment, our lives can be changed um, inexorably forever by police. So I hope that as you see this in the hands of these really skilled actors, you will find the characters authentic and also uh, perhaps go to some different levels of understanding. So I am really, really thrilled with this outstanding cast. I've worked with most of them and seen the work of the ones that I haven't worked with. So I'll introduce them in the order of appearance and then I'm gonna be reading stage directions and sound cues. So 
Um, Trevor Affleck will be playing Claire Hopegood. She is the chair of the cotillion. She's married to Lewis since college. Rochelle Jackson Days will be playing Marie Deadweiler, Claire's friend and sorority sister, mother of Byron and wife of Spencer. Peter Lawson Jones will be playing Lewis Hopegood. He is a corporate attorney married to Claire since college. Emily Terry will be playing Evie Hopegood. She is a debutante and daughter of Claire and Lewis Hopegood. Rob Branch will be playing the police sergeant. Peter Isaac Rebar will be police officer Smith and Taya Offutt Decker as Lewis Hopegood Jr., son of Claire and Lewis Hopegood and Evie's brother. The time is 2005 in Cleveland, Ohio. The murder of an African-American youth by police has sparked protests in public square downtown Cleveland. It is also the eve of an elite African-American sorority's debutante ball that will take place at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, downtown Public Square, Cleveland. On Rise is an expensively appointed master bedroom in the Hope Goods house with a window, TV, bed, other items, and the television is on. Also is an exquisite room in the Deadweiler's home. The television is on. Claire Hopegood and Marie Deadweiler are speaking to each other on the phone. Both have the TV news on reporting on a Black Lives Matter demonstration. Yes. I'm watching it now. Oh my God. Black Lives Matter. What in the world happened? Claire, did you see that? That cop just hit that boy in the head. Oh my God, yes, I saw it. Silence as they watch. Claire, I don't wanna bring this up, but well, what are we gonna do about the cotillion tomorrow evening? I mean, our young ladies can't possibly wade through all of that. Honey, you don't have to tell me. I was just thinking the exact thing. Okay, look, um, well. What are we gonna do? I mean, I just have Byron, but you've got a daughter and this is the most important night of these girls' lives. If, if we don't get this straight, I mean, what are we going to do? We have no options. Claire, you are the chair of this committee. You've got to do something. Okay, Marie, calm down. Getting worked up is gonna help, I'm thinking. I got it. I'll get Lewis to speak to Bill and get the demonstration moved. Yes, that's it. He can get the protesters moved so that our girls can ascend the grand staircase into the Ritz from the limo on the avenue, just as we planned. <laughs> what? Who's Bill? I, I mean, what are you talking about? Who's the chief, Bill? The chief of police, Bill Burrow. Oh, right. I don't know where my mind is. This is just so distressing. That's a great idea. Claire, you are a lifesaver. You call Lewis and I'll call Nora Rose. She's been hyperventilating about the crab legs and caviar we ordered. What? The menu for the ball. You remember, she was worried about the caviar and the girls' gloves. You know, the 18 button white gloves. Everyone says that the girl was staying their white gloves with the caviar. And then Carol Ann says the debutantes will simply take the gloves off pulling one finger at a time, as every lady and stripper knows. And we all cracked up, it was rich. It took six ballots to vote on the crab legs and caviar. It took three meetings to get an agreement. I know you remember, Claire. Yes, 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 of course. Listen, okay, I'll call you back after I talk to Lewis. Okay. Looking at the TV. Oh my God. Marie, those kids are throwing things at the police. What in the world is happening? Who is Brandon McLeod? Lights up on Lewis in his office on a conference call. Right, 
but if the logging rights were not actually delineated, then how do we know uh, that there was wrongdoing? Uh, make sure you're right. Hold on for a moment. Uh, yeah, hey baby, I'm in the middle of something. Can I call you back at some point later? Uh, Louis, there are protesters in public square. Okay, but I'm working. Can I get back to you? Louis, there are protesters in public square. Outside the Ritz, the news said they'll be there until who knows how long they're gonna be there. Uh-huh, uh, uh Claire. What does this have to do with anything? Louis Hopegood, your daughter's cotillion is tomorrow night and there are protesters in the square. How are the girls going to enter the hotel if there are protesters in the square? You can't be comfortable with our daughter coming into contact with all of that. And I'm calling you because you need to get them moved. Claire, what? What? Louis, for the past two years, we have been planning for our daughter, along with the 19 other Gamma Zeta Epsilon debutantes, to sweep into the Ritz in their white ball gowns and up the stairs to the grand ballroom. And there is no way, absolutely no way, that I'm going to have this evening ruined for them because of a protest. OK, hold on for just a minute. Hey, Jamal Luther, you guys there? Hey, thanks for holding on. Uh, something's come up that I have to attend to. Uh, the two of you handle the research piece about alerting the logging authority in Alabama. Uh, make sure that they don't know what we're doing. I don't want those crackers tipping off each other and screwing another black family out of their land and timber rights. I'll get back to you after I take care of this. Yes, the cotillion is this weekend and no, it's none of your business what I'll be doing. You two just make sure that when I call back, you've got the details on the contract and the pertinent sections of Alabama law to protect that black family. Okay. Yes, Claire. Uh, that was uh, just a $100 million contract challenge that we're mounting to protect an African-American family and uh, our total fees to us will be 30 million if we win. Oh, but I broke off the call to deal with this uh, matter. You have my full attention, so go ahead. What can I do to make your life easier? Louis, please don't be sarcastic. I wouldn't have called you if it weren't important. I am the chair of the cotillion committee, and so it's up to me to fix this. The only thing I can think of is to get the protesters moved. There are a hundred other places in this city that they can go, but there's only one Ritz. And we have had this ball booked for two years. So I want the protesters moved. And I want you to call Bill and get the protesters moved. Claire, I love you. You know that. And I love our daughter, but what oh, you're asking- Oh, please don't. Just please, call Bill. He'll do it for you. I'm not sure he can. Do you know what happened to cause the protest? I, I don't know, some injustice, I guess. I, I really don't know. Claire, a young black man was shot by police in his home. Brandon McLeod, he was 15, getting ready for school. It, it, it was on the news. All right, look, I'll, I'll try to reach Bill. Please don't just try. You've got to. Okay, all right. She is going to be beautiful, isn't she? <laughs> It'll be actually worth all the money I had to spend on this thing. <laughs> hey, by the way, did my brocade vest come back from the cleaners? I thought that looked real sharp with my uh, tucks when I escort her in. Oh, Louis, it is going to be the most beautiful ball ever. The event of the year. I've got the newspapers and Channel 3 News coming. They appreciate a positive story. 
a contrast to all the negative images they're always showing of us robbing or shooting or protesting. <laughs> oh, Lewis, this will be the happiest night of her life if you get the protesters moved. Okay. I'll call Bill and see what can be done. Talk to you later. <laughs> Love you. Love Bye. you too. Bye-bye. <laughs> they hang up. Claire's phone, they hang up. Claire's phone rings. It's Marie. Hello. What did Lewis say? He's going to call Bill. And I made it perfectly clear that the protest must be moved. Sweetie, I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I called Nora Rose and we emailed the committee and the Soros so that they won't all be calling you. Oh, thank you, darling. You're mm. such a dear. I'm sure now that Lewis is on it, that this little misunderstanding will be cleared up tonight. So that tomorrow evening, our young ladies will be gliding up the grand staircase at the Ritz, just as I had it envisioned it from day one. Mm. Day one? Claire, sometimes you talk as if you, Lewis, Evie, and Lewis Jr. are a firm rather than a family. I just mean, since our Evie was born, I have imagined this evening with pleasure. After all, my parents weren't wealthy enough to achieve a cotillion for me and my sisters. They were too busy making more of us to be able to feed all of us, so. <laughs> what? It Claire? Not <laughs> nothing, nothing. Did you decide on your shoes? Which ones are you wearing? Oh, Marie. Not the Louboutins. Well, why not? I got them. Oh. I intend to flaunt them. Oh, but not at the cotillion, dear. Why not? Because, my dear, they are déclassé. Two nouveau, 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 nouveau riche. <laughs> Only homegirls will wear Louboutins to a cotillion. Where the Jimmy Choo's? They're elegant, classy, and they don't hurt your feet. Why, whatever do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> How did you know Lou Louboutins make my feet hurt? Sweetheart, Louboutins make everybody's feet hurt. They're handmade by the French. They don't fit American feet well. Anyway, they don't fit our African American feet well. And what do you mean by that? There you go. Uh, speaking of which, have you talked to Evie? Yes, she got in last night. I sent her straight to the hairdresser this morning and made her promise to get some order in that bunch of knots she calls a hairstyle. My daughter is not going to be a debutante with her hair all over her head. And what does she say to that? Oh, you know what I call the liberation talk. <laughs> I get it. But for this evening, I feel that she can honor my request. I know exactly what you mean, really. I sent Spencer to the barber to have his hair and beard trimmed and dyed. They do that? Oh, yes, girl. Spencer has been dyeing his hair for years. He's 15 years my senior, and he tells me all the time he doesn't want to look like an old man when he's with me. <laughs> <laughs> He looks so young anyway. No one ever guessed that he's much, that much older than you. Oh, wait. Um, I'm getting a text from Lewis Jr. He's just letting me know he's walking and he's on his way home from DeAndre's. <laughs> Is that that family that just moved up here from the hood? Girl, you ought to stop. <laughs> but hair stores, eyesores, and Check cash in places galore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that's it, Evie. Gotta go. I'll call you later. Okay, okay bye, bye bye. From from the car. Mom, oh my God! Did you see how many folks turned out for the protest for Brandon McLeod? Oh, it's beautiful. It's powerful. I want to go. Uh, Cheryl's going and she said she'd drive us. I could be back later and, and still get up and go to the cotillion. It's dope, mom. So powerful. I really want to be a part of this. Oh my goodness. Will you please slow down? 
modulate your voice. And no, Evie, you are not going to some protest rally. That's out. With everything that I've had to do to make sure this cotillion comes off without a hitch, I do not need to be wondering where you are and if you're safe. That's why we live out here in Sterling Hills Heights, where it's safe. Now, please, just come home. You need your rest for tomorrow. And please tell me that you've got your hair quaffed into a style. God, Mom, just because we live in Sterling Hills Heights doesn't make us immune to what's happening. This is a serious cause. This is our time. Seize the moment. They can't go on killing Black people like this. Evelyn Mackenzie Hopegood, I am not arguing with you today. Where are you? Oh God, Mom, I'm I'm coming around to I-271. We're gonna stop at the circle and, and get something to eat. And, and then I thought- Evie, what did I just say? Tires screeching, blue and red flashing lights appear on the ceiling. Sounds of cars arriving in a rush. The cops shouting. Face to the ground. Get your hands in back of your head. Now. Now! Claire going to the window. She looks out. What in the world? What? Louis Jr.? Louis Jr.? Oh my God! That's Louis! That's my son! That's my son, officer! officer Ma'am! Get back inside the window! Get back! Do not come outside! Stay inside! Mom! Mom, what's going on? What's happening? They've got Lewis on the ground. They, they've got guns. Come on, Sarge. Man, he's just a kid. Ma'am, get back inside. Ma'am, boy. Don't you move. That's my son. He lives here, officer. Uh, officer, th there must be a, there's a mistake. Sarge, that's his mom, man. Mom, call dad. Hang up and call dad now. Officer Smith. You can get back in the car. Claire starts recording on her phone. She calls Lewis Sr. Lewis? Lewis, they've got Junior. Oh, who's got Junior? Claire, Claire, what are you talking about? Look at your phone, look at your phone. I'm filming, Lewis. They, the cops have got him out front on the ground. Hey! Don't hurt him! Ma'am, get back inside the window! But we'll tell you when it's safe to come out. Hey, I'm, I'm calling Bill. Hold on, Claire. Tell Junior not to resist. I'll get right back to you. I live here, officer! I'm Lewis Hopegood Jr. That's my mom! That's my mom! Get up, nigga! If you want to live today, Sound of a gun being cocked, blackout. Lights up, Claire on the phone with Lewis Sr. No, they left. They're gone. He came in and then they left about 20 minutes ago. Damn. I, I called Bill and he told them who they had on the ground. At my house, at my effing house. Did they even apologize? The young one tried to, but not really. They said he fit the description of someone who has been breaking into homes in the neighborhood. And I told them there haven't been any break-ins. The sergeant told me I needed to shut up and go inside. So I brought Junior in. Hey, where is he now? In his room, I gave him some chamomile tea. Probably shouldn't have given, should have given him a shot of whiskey. Hey, how are you, baby? I'm okay. Shaken, but okay. I just can't believe this happened to Junior. You both should probably have a shot of whiskey. Phone beeps. Oh, this is Abby. I I'll add her in. Uh, hey, baby girl. Oh, my God. Daddy, it was terrible. They had Junior with 
guns to his head. God, we are just niggers like everybody else to them. We don't matter. That's why we're down at public square. And this is why I want to be with them. Why I need to be there. I'm so mad that they can just do this to anyone, daddy. All right, baby girl, but, but don't use that word. And, and please try to calm down. I, I'm on my way home. Evie, this cotillion is important to your mother and, and to me. Yes. And we're going with our guns blazing. They're not going to stop that. Your father will handle this with Bill on Monday. So pack your things, Evie, and your Spanx. I'm not gonna have you shake, rattle, and rolling tomorrow night. I've worked too hard. Claire, uh, just listen for a moment. Yeah, we've worked real hard to be where we are, and I guess we have a level of safety that comes with living in Sterling Hills Heights, but we're not safe. There's no absolute safety. And I will talk to Bill on Monday, so pack my things because we're going to that cotillion. And put my jeans and sneakers in there too. Evie, you pack yours as well, because after the cotillion, you're going to the protest. Oh, Daddy, thank you so much. This protest, it, it, it's so much more important. Louis, is that what? And I'm coming with you. What? what? You don't mean... Claire, how much closer does it need to get? I'm going to that protest. What kind of man would I be? What kind of father would I be if I didn't join my, my, my activist daughter in making a better future for people who look like us? She reminds me of the 70s and someone else I know. Why don't you come too, Claire? Lights fade. Claire? The end. Wow. Wonderful. Thank you, Jean and cast. What a powerful piece. Um, yes. When I read this, when we did our um, rehearsals of this piece, uh, A, what a great group of people. Um, so if there's a virtual, I mean, I guess if you want to turn on your audio and give applause, I don't know how much you can applause after that. I feel like a little bit of a weight on my chest right now. And I, I just kind of want to sit it, have it sit with me um, because what a great, um, just what a great group of actors and writing. Uh, good job, Jean. Thank you so much. Um, Peter, Treva, Emily, um, both Peters. There's two Peters, uh, Robert Branch, um, Emily, Terry, who did a, a wonderful role for us in um, Knock Me a Kiss many, many, many moons ago. I don't know if it was super many moons ago. Um, Taya, who is uh, Treva's, Treva's, uh, um, Treva's child. So yeah, like a really great yeah, Rochelle. Yeah. Who I've Yep. I've never met before. Yes, Rochelle, very excited to have you. So some actors that I've worked with and some new actors. So this was a wonderful experience for me as well because I got to meet some wonderful people. Let me just read some of the, I mean, there's like mad uh, comments coming in. Uh, bravo, great climax, what an impact and so well performed. Great work, Jean, very powerful. Uh, fabulous, bravo, Jean, and your fabulous cast. So powerful and poignant. I have chills, timely topic, relatable, script flew very well and realistic, bravo. Um, fantastic, powerful, loved the character. The girl's dialogue was so natural, sister-like. Um, the actors were outstanding. I mean, they're just coming. Um, great job, Jean. Uh, wonderful work, everyone. Thank you for sharing. Um, fine cast, fine plot, and a very powerful um, play from Ed Walsh, who's another one of our playwrights. Um, loved it, Jean. This was so powerful. The cast was awesome. Fantastic story and performances. Hope you hear our applause. Um, yes, yeah, so that's all of these wonderful chat um, comments are our virtual applause. Really a wonderful piece and really wonderfully performed. Um, and then, you know, what a great opportunity to use theater as a platform, which I believe um, to talk about what's going on in the world around us. Um, 
really worked well in this format from Valerie. Uh, bravo, thank you for sharing your gifts. Um, really wonderful uh, to have you all join us for this reading um, of Jean's play. Um, and then Jean and I will of course talk about um, uh, anything further that we might be able to do. Uh, but this 10 minute um, platform also too allows me uh, to see all kinds of different um, stories being told by different writers. Um, it, it's allowed us an opportunity to be introduced to all kinds of talents um, in Cleveland. So, so just having this platform doing this 10 minute series, you know, yeah, it may be small plays and it may be short scripts, but you don't realize how much you can pack into that, that little amount of time um, and what can come out of that little amount of time. Um, so thank you all for your time, Jean's cast and crew, um, and um, your creativity is amazing. Um, so I wanna thank you for joining us. Um, our next piece, so I don't wanna take too much time in between. Um, I can also uh, continue to read the, the comments. So if you didn't get a chance, um, please feel free to drop uh, the comments during the next one and I'll read them in between um, the next, the last two. Um, thank you everyone um, and my outstanding cast from Jean. Bravo, thank you for sharing your gifts from Joey to uh, Jean and her cast. So up next, we have a piece written by one of our, um, and Jean is not normally one who has participated in Stage Rights. So again, Stage Rights has an open door. Um, it's really great to have new people come in. Um, Cindy, on the other hand, is someone who has been here from the get-go. Um, so we have some new persons tonight and some veterans. Uh, Cindy was one of our original Stage Rights uh, people at the very beginning, like almost nine or 10 years ago. Um, and this next piece is a piece that she wrote. We've done a couple of her 10 minute plays. Um, so I will turn the stage over to Cindy um, and let you tell us a little bit about the script that you wrote um, and introduce your cast um, and then um, take it from there. So Cindy, the stage is yours. Okay. Uh, even though I wrote, I wrote this play long before COVID, but I think it's very appropriate for COVID because, um, can you hear me by the way? Uh, okay. We can, we can hear you. It's very appropriate for COVID because we are all seeking connectivity and we're all finding family in different ways than we would have in a different situation. And I think this is a play about connectivity, about finding family where you, where you can. And I'd like to introduce my cast. Um, and by the way, they are really very special. <laughs> they first got together as a cast because we had some technical problems at five o'clock today. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, anyway, Ruth Gold is played by Agnes Herman, who is also with the Playwriting Workshop. Mary O'Shaughnessy is played by um, Mary Wernz, who um, is a wonderful actor, and uh, I worked with her before. And Josh Mandel does the stage directions. So, Josh, take it away. Keepers of the Flame by Cindy Dettelbach. The cast? Ruth Gold, a resident of a nursing home. She is prickly, but well-meaning. Mary O'Shaughnessy, a nurse at the home, a woman approaching middle age. The scene is the room of Ruth Gold. Time is Christmas Eve. While balancing herself with her walker, Ruth Gold is attempting to struggle out of her sweatpants and top and put on a dressy sweater and skirt that she has painstakingly extricated from the closet as the evening nurse, Mary O'Shaughnessy, enters. Mrs. Gold, what in the world? You give me hand. Between Vorkor and arthritis, I can't do a damn thing. Why are you all gussied up? It's practically bedtime. Oh, expecting company. Your daughter? She doesn't usually come at this hour. My son, the doctor. Throughout the dialogue, Mary helps Ruth get dressed. The one from out of town. Because this Yontif, your Yontif that is. I figure he's probably not that busy today. He has a very high-end clientele, mostly goy, Gentiles. Uh, they probably don't want to be operated on Christmas Eve. I expect not. In any case, I assume your daughter will be here tomorrow. My son overcame so many obstacles to become doctor. And now he's at the top of his profession. You must be very proud. 
You don't have children, do you? Not that I know of. Not even a husband last time I looked. <laughs> Kids, they can drive you crazy, but they also make you glad you had them. Oh, this skirt, it's practically swimming on me. You must try to eat more, Mrs. Gold. You're losing too much weight. Well, tell the chef to make the food more appetizing. Then I eat more. Here, let me turn the waistband over. It'll sit more snugly that way. What time is it? Past seven. That late? I guess my son would have been here by now if he was coming. He probably had emergency surgery. Emergencies don't respect the holidays, do they? No, they don't. And it's always Christmas Day. I guess he'll come then. With the whole day in front of him. I never had the pleasure of meeting your son, Mrs. Gold. Oh, he's big strapping man, over six feet. <laughs> to think he was a scrawny kid who wouldn't eat half the foods I set in front of him. <laughs> you don't want to copy his early bad habits now, do you? My son's a very busy man, highly respected, makes Beck's doctor on the dead list every year. You look very nice, Mrs. Gold. <laughs> Run a comb through your hair and dab on a bit of lipstick and you'll have the men lining up outside your door. Oh, sure. To take my blood pressure, hand me meds, or better yet, give me enema. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a good sense of humor, Mrs. Gold. Oh, everyone needs good laugh every once in a while, don't they? Wait a minute. You're not supposed to be here. I'm not. You're going to be somewhere else, Ireland, back to your homeland for the holidays. You, your brother, his family. You have a very good memory, Mrs. Gold. Ever since I can remember, you've talked about that trip. Yes, I have. So shouldn't you be there already in time for Christmas? It didn't work out, the trip that is. Too bad. But you'll have Christmas Day off. Spend day with your brother and his family. I'm working tomorrow. Two shifts. You'll see so much of me, you'll be sick of me. Making you work on both Christmas Eve and Christmas Day? I'd like to give them what for to whoever set up that schedule. No one is making me work. I volunteered. Won't your brother and sister be disappointed? You, you, your little nephew, too? They're not in town. Where are they? Out of town. Yes, but where? You're nothing if not persistent, Mrs. Gold. Uh, so? Wayland. But weren't you all going I to go? A very good airfare, a one day only sail. And you? I missed it, the one day sail that is. When I went on the internet, the plane ticket overseas had practically tripled. Way too pricey for me, poor pocketbook. Especially now that I have a temperamental furnace to replace. They should have told you about sale. Mary busies herself, smoothing the bed to avoid answering. So, you'll spend Christmas with other relatives, some friends? My brother is the only relative I have this side of the Atlantic. And me friends, they... Well, surely they'd be happy to have you join them. I told everyone I was going to Ireland. It's too, oh. well, you know, it's such a late date. You should have had husband, children of your own. The only holidays that mean something are the ones spent with family. Why, some of the ugliest, meanest women I know have husbands, children's too. And here you are, single and childless. <laughs> I don't know if you've just insulted me or given me a compliment. I would never insult you. The telephone rings. I bet that's my son now. Mary hands the phone to Ruth, who wordlessly indicates that Mary should wait outside. Ring the call button when you're ready for me to come back in. Mary exits. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought, yes, I did have the potato pancakes. What I thought of them? You really don't want to know. Again, tomorrow? Not likely. 
Now, if you'll excuse me, I have company. Hangs up and pushes the call button. Mary returns. I guess it wasn't... The nutritionist. Better she should spend time counseling the chef instead of quizzing the inmates. So both of us, uh, it seems, are without family this holiday night. It's my holiday too, you know. Hanukkah, the first night. When you usually get together with family to exchange presents, eat special foods. I saw the candelabra at the nurse's station when I came in. And didn't they serve special potato pancakes at dinner tonight? They're called latkes, except the ones here taste more like pressed soda swimming in grease. Not any latke I ever knew, or made. I bet you were a very good cook. And the menorah, fitted out with light bulbs instead of candles. Feh. That's because of safety concerns, you know that. A real menorah needs real candles. Otherwise, why bother? And now, Help me out of this ridiculous outfit. If the head nurse comes in and sees me looking like this, she'll ship me straight to the lockup bin. I've got an idea. Keep your pretty party clothes on a bit longer. Just wait here and I'll be right back. Mary exits. Ruth mumbles to herself and then makes an effort to fix her hair and put on lipstick. Like I've got somebody better to see. <laughs> I've got somebody better to see. Huh. What's this? Mary returns shortly with the whole set of votive candles. She begins to unpack them. What? What are these? Votive candles. I bought them to make my apartment more festive for the holidays. So why are you undoing them here? Mary quietly closes the door behind her then whispers in a conspiratorial voice. These are real candles, so I thought we might light them and pretend each is a Hanukkah light. But the safety regulations. If you won't tell, I won't either. Besides, I'll be in the room all the time. Between the two of us, I bet we can take care of a misbehaving candle or two. Well, if you're okay with that, we, we need two candles, one for first night and the other for Shamas. The what? The lead candle we light the other candles with. Mary sets up the candles in a row. No problem. The shamus has to be elevated above the others. We can just put two, two votives on top of one another, like this. Uh, now you have to say something, don't you? The blessing. Go ahead. I'd love to hear it. All right. Baruch Atta. Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'cholom, asher kidushanu b'mitzvosav v'utzivanu l'hadlik ner shel Hanukkah. Now it's your turn. Oh, I don't know those words. Your own prayer. Don't you say prayers on Christmas Eve? Pray to uh, or for uh, Yosola? Yosola? That's Yiddish for Jesus. <laughs> yes, we do mention Yasala at church, usually at midnight mass. Okay. Just as I'm pretending this votive thing is menorah, you can pretend. God help me. My room is a church, and now it is midnight. In for nickel, in for novena, I guess. Mary says a silent prayer and then crosses herself. But you'll forgive me if I don't do the singing. I really need organ accompaniment for that, plus a lot of other voices to drown mine out. <laughs> uh, this is some mixed up holiday celebration, isn't it? I can't wait to tell me brother about it. Or my son, my daughter too. But the lit candles will keep us a secret. Just between us, okay? Merry Christmas, Mary. Happy Hanukkah, Mrs. Gould. The end. Goodness. Oh my goodness. All of these tonight. They're like giving me tears. Like I just, you know, wow. You guys are so talented. I can't even tell you. Um, the playwrights and the actors tonight. 
we are just we're blessed in northeast ohio with such talented people a wonderful job um agnes and mary um mary was actually supposed to be in cindy's play that we were gonna do in march of last year or april of last year that got canceled due to covid so in a strange way we get a chance to do connect them together uh with this 10 minute um, bravo from Emily Terry. Um, excellent reading. Applause, lovely dialogue. Beautiful Agnes and Mary, you were wonderful. Agnes, you know I love you and your Hebrew prayer was perfect. Great story, Cindy, thanks. Kudos, I loved it. So believable. Beautiful what characters and language. Lovely piece, Cindy's. And the actors were great. Love Rannigan. Great acting as well. Yeah, we tonight we just lucked out with all the good scripts and the um, really wonderful acting. Really great di dialogue and very natural from Emily Terry, who was the reader who was reading in our previous um, Cindy's play, really touching. I had some tears, um, so beautiful. And this shared celebration, yeah, during these crazy times, we're all kind of finding new ways to connect to each other um, for the holidays. I know recently, you know, everybody hopefully was socially distancing for um, Thanksgiving, um, but a really wonderful way to kind of share sentiments and to cure loneliness in a lot of ways. Um, so you could see that in both of those characters. Two, our first two plays, really wonderful tonight. Very timely, beautiful from Valerie. Um, bravo from Kate. Um, so beautiful with the shared celebration, beautiful, great writing and acting. Agnes, your Hebrew was terrific. Um, so sensitive, terrific things. So yeah, a lot of good feedback from our audiences tonight. A really decent audience, both um, Facebook and via Zoom. So it's really great that people are getting a chance to participate. Um, I know we all miss theater something awful. I know I do. Um, I can't wait till we can actually meet in our space again. Um, but in the interim, this has been a wonderful opportunity uh, to connect with everybody. So thank you, Cindy. Um, thank you, Mary. And um, without further ado, um, we can introduce our last piece for this evening. Um, so Agnes, actually, you get to keep your video and your uh, audio on because you will be acting with your other half. Um, and Joey Bauer, who is the direct, uh, the writer of our last piece, I'll go ahead and turn over the stage to you, Joey, if you want to give the audience just a little bit of information about why you wrote the script um, and introduce your cast. And um, the stage is yours, Joey. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, Celeste. And happy holidays, everyone. It's so nice to be with uh, a theater family. I, I think we all appreciate this. Uh, the title of the play is A Blast from the Past. And it was inspired uh, very much by the recent election and uh, by all those people in MAGA hats waving the flag who have skeletons in their closets. Well, uh, in the next few minutes, we get to uh, see some of the skeletons come out to dance. Uh, the cast is Agnes Herman, once again, playing the role of Chantal, and Paul Slimak playing the role of Joey, and Ann Cohn is doing stage directions. So without further ado, Ann, take it away. Thank you. Setting, Cleveland, Ohio. The present. We are in the living room of a modest apartment. Chantal is sitting on a couch. She's wearing gray cotton slacks and a blue blazer, very stylish. Joey is on an easy chair facing her. He is wearing jeans and a sweater. I'm very upset with you, Chantal. Haven't called me in years. What's up? I don't live in the past. Well, I do. It may be 2020 on the calendar, but when I think of you, it's 1974 all over again. Life goes on. Does your husband appreciate you? Because he's the luckiest man in the world. I think he does, probably. If you have to wonder about it, you have a situation. You're a special Chantal. I didn't hear a marriage proposal coming out of your mouth in 74, though. You've always been a big talker. Your tasty manna for a lonely, confused woman. Including yourself. I plead the fifth. We're legendary in these parts. Aware of that? 
Like Bonnie and Clyde. But we didn't rob banks and shoot up the place. Well, it's not too late, babe. Though for us to resume where we left off some 46 years back, we had it all. Well, don't tell me that you haven't fantasized about leaving hubby and running off with Desperado Joey here. This is inappropriate. I know what. We'll drink a glass of champagne, eat Eskimo pies, and praise each other. I have a flight to catch and can't get caught up in anything I might regret. Scared of letting the genie out of the bottle? I might like that, which is what frightens me. So I'll pass. Besides, I gave up drinking, so nix the champagne. And I abstain from sweets, therefore lose the Eskimo pie. What about sex? Are you on the wagon for that too? I'm married, mister. Oh, you're much more fun as a fantasy than the version sitting across from me. <laughs> Your fantasies are toxic, as I so vividly recall. You enjoyed the ride along. Remember the sauna at the Shaker Racket Club? You mustn't tell anyone about that, not ever. That's why I had to see you to get your solemn promise face to face that you will keep it in between us. My husband is running for governor, pro-Christ, pro-gun, pro-death penalty, and pro-life. If word got out about us and about it, that would mean curtains for sure. It's a red state, like bright fire engine red, got me? We got away clean though. Two rebels all oh, getting it on like wild dogs in the sauna at the most restricted club in town. Look, you got your rocks off and I got pregnant. Where's the equity in that? One of us got the short end of the stick. Guess who? You called me from Chicago en route to your new life in Minneapolis to tell me that you had the abortion. You didn't give me a chance to protest. To protest or jump for joy, which? We'd have had an incredible kid there with my looks and your family's money. Promise me. I can play hardball. My lips are sealed forever, forever. Mean it. Before we go our separate ways, tell me what attracted you to me. Oh, big bucks, nice rack, and a fine, fine butt. Besides that, you had a cute little nose and a great smile. So I used pickup line number one on you. Haven't we met somewhere? and you snapped up the bait like a hungry lake trout. <laughs> I thought it was so stupid, but more like cute stupid than stupid stupid. Thank you, Radcliffe graduate, for that most colorful description. Then when you told me you were a rebellious debutante from old money, and that you thought your mother was a dyke and your father was a philanderer and your brother was <laughs> suicidal, I saw visions of Cupid aiming his bow my way. Then, zing, the arrow hit me and I was smitten. Still am, too. It's too late, my handsome man. There are no replays in life. You were a good Jewish boy and spurned me. I was a good rebellious chicksa debutante and true to form, I spurned me too. There are things about me that you never knew. I got drunk and had sex with three boys in the same night when I was 17 attempted suicide twice, was bulimic and almost got expelled from Radcliffe twice for cheating. My father wrote big checks to smooth their feathers. So much sadness for just one person. Thanks for inviting me to the pity party. Well, my daughter turned out okay though. She took after her father. Unluckily for her. You're a dying breed. You were my very own Patty Hurst. Well, champ, win some, lose some, and sometimes you get rained out. I'm sorry, Chantal. Oh, so, so very sorry that I didn't have the courage to defy my parents and smother you with love. <laughs> Makes two of us. I have a problem, Joey. I'm in danger of being bored to death. And that concerns me how? I'll have my Eskimo pie now. One thing leads to another. Show me. End of play. 
Thank you, Agnes and Paul. Um, our first comment sounds just like Agnes and Paul missed them from Val. <laughs> yes, Valerie was Val, Val Young, Valerie. I'm oh, pretty sure that that might oh. be Valerie. Val was in the Iceman Cummings with Paul. Yes, yeah, so many wonderful connections to our ensemble family tonight. A little dark comedy. Thank you, Joey. A little uh, interesting, the, the array of political commentary that we have had this evening from all of the scripts um, to really just give an interesting, you know, array of voices that we have in our community, in our, uh, in our world right now. Um, not a chance of being bored to tears with that one. Laughing out loud. Thanks for the entendres from Treva. Yeah, there's some dark, I mean, I would say a dark comedy, but there were some laughs in there. So thank you. It's always good too, to have some dramatic and some comedic in sometimes in the same play, but if you're doing an evening of scripts, it's always nice to have some a little bit lighter um, material as well. But three really great commentaries on, you know, our world, uh, what we all are dealing with, um, the people that we come in contact with on the daily. Um, I know Ensemble um, has very much been a uh, place where I think, um, at least during my tenure as the artistic director, you know, where we all come to talk about those things. You know, theater can just be a form of entertainment, but I also think it's an opportunity to start creating conversations with people about, uh, you know, the people that we come in contact with, the world around us. Drama is, is conflict in the mind of the audience, uh, but then it's also, you know, the study of, of, the human, of the human being and the human experiment. Um, so it's been really wonderful to have all of these 10 minute plays up to this point. I mean, we're in our sixth Monday now, you know, and there's such a great array. So if for any reason, and then I'll read these few more uh, comments. If for any reason you missed any of tonight's uh, uh, Zoom or you you know got cut off or for some reason the internet wasn't perfect because God only knows the internet, even when you spend millions of dollars on it, isn't always 100% there. Um, there will be archived videos of this live stream on our website on that page that I posted earlier um, that has our page dedicated to the 10 minute plays. So we'll put, um, it takes me about two or three days to upload them. So uh, the 16th and tonight's will be up there by the end of this week, ideally. Um, but the idea that you can then jump on our website and watch them as well um, there if you did not get a chance to see them tonight. Um, and then of course, uh, let me hear, share. Thank you, very interesting evening, loved it, wonderful. Glad you enjoyed it, Deborah. Uh, great two-hander, wonderful chemistry. Paul and Agnes are married, so that makes a lot of sense that they would have natural chemistry. Um, <laughs> And one of the many things I can say about our plays are, is that they're never, about our, all of our plays that we're doing in this 10 minute series, thank you, Ed, is that they are never boring. That is true. Um, good job, Joey, Witty, and Real. Joey at his best. Bravo from Rochelle, who was very excited to hear it and watch it. So that's great. She was in Jean's piece. Um, thanks, Cast and Anne. It was a privilege working with you from Joey. Um, you guys really played off of one another. Yes. Paul and Agnes, you do that very well. Um, and thank you, Agnes, who has been in numerous readings. I can't even tell you how many, so she's wonderful. Thank you to all of the actors this evening. Um, you are a treasure um, to Cleveland and the theater community. Um, we are such um, a wonderfully rich community of theater people. And I hope in my you know, future of doing theater, I can continue to put a spotlight um, on what immense talent we have here right in Northeast Ohio. Um, including our playwrights too. It's amazing how much you can smack in to a 10 minute play. Um, you know, they're not super long, but they're not super short. And it's great how much material you can pack in to such a short script. So um, without um, keeping you all too much later on this Monday evening, I thought we might go over a little bit over our eight o'clock. Um, I thought we would actually go a little bit further over eight o'clock, but we got, we got all three done pretty quickly. Um, I just want to say thank you again to everybody who was involved. Um, so Jean and your cast, um, Sydney and your cast, uh, Joey and your cast, you guys are all great. Um, the time that you guys are dedicating to this. We're going to take a break for December, but I'm hoping to bring it in again in January and actually maybe expand a little bit, you know, getting involved, some sponsorships and monetization of the, of the program. Um, and then also maybe bringing in voices from, uh, outside of Cleveland as well. Um, so giving you an opportunity to hear some short plays 
that are written by people outside of Cleveland. As much as I love the land and the land is the best, we will, we will just let them know that the land is the best and that they can come and join our wonderful um, community of theater people. Uh, thank you everyone, great evening, excellent time um, uh, leaving us wanting more. So yes, Jean, thank you for that uh, shout out. <clears throat> Stay tuned, um, our website. So I did put that link um, for the 10 minute plays. That's where you'll find all of the information on the updated scripts that we'll be doing. If you can, and only if you're able right now, please feel free if you want um, to support us in any way you can in a donation. Um, if you wanna volunteer helping as much as we can during COVID, um, we can't really do that much physically in the space, but <coughs> and I just breathed in and my throat got really dry. Emily Terry, thank you to all the actors and the playwrights and to me, Celeste. Oh, thank you, Emily. You're the best. Join us again um, next week, uh, not next week, January 11th. Have a happy holiday in the interim, um, whatever holidays you and your family celebrate. And we will look forward to seeing you again in 2020, 20, 2021, not 2020. 2020 can end and go the wayside. I am ready for 2021 uh, to bring all wonderful and new things. Um, I do always think that right after the plague came the Renaissance. Um, so I'm looking forward to some wonderful things happening in the new year. Happy holidays to all. Happy new year if we don't see you before then. Um, and we will look forward to seeing you again soon in January. Stay um, tuned to more information by visiting our website. Um, yes, happy holidays to everyone. Thank you, Rochelle. Wonderful program. Thank you, Jean from Lisa. Um, thank you to the actors and the playwright. Yes, Emily, I read, I'm second, I'm reading things over and over again. I did not give as much love to Facebook tonight, but that's okay. I'll go back um, and share those as well. Uh, again, this video and all the other six uh, programs that we've done up to this point will be on our website. That 10 minute play uh, link is where you wanna go um, to find all information on this 10 minute readings uh, via Zoom series. It's been a wonderful uh, outlet for us. It's done really well in the last six uh, things that we've posted. Um, so I'm really excited that people are enjoying these um, and uh, I'm posting it in the link one more time um, ensembletheaterclue.org forward slash 10 minute readings via Zoom. Um, and then if you just go to Ensemble Theater CLE and you do plan our visit and you see the 10 minute link, all the information you need to know about what's coming up next will be on there as well. Thank you all. I wish you all a good night um, and a happy holiday and I'll talk to you all soon. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, will, I will hang out here for a little bit while everybody leaves our Zoom and end our um, Facebook live stream. I wish you all the best and uh, we will see you in the new year. <laughs>